Hi, I'm Anne of All Trades, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a square block of wood round. AKA, we're going to make a double bobbin spindle for a Windsor chair. First, you want to find the two centers, AKA the center of the piece of wood between the two centers on the lathe. You want to make sure that they can spin freely from your banjo, but you also want your banjo to be as close as possible without resting. You want your banjo to be about halfway up so when you've got your wood at 45 degrees it wants to be right there and once you've got it tightened in squished between those two centers really tightly you can go ahead and turn on your lathe now i'm going to turn in real time and then explain what i'm doing because i'm constantly trying to beat my own time with this so let's get started we're going to turn around You want to tighten it up. Oh, first things first. Now, I have the gouge up tightly against my waist, and I'm moving my body back and forth as much as possible. When this is out flying around, you have far less control. I have my hand on top of here so that it keeps the tool steady on the tool rest. If I have a nice long tool wrist, then I don't have to stop and move it in the middle of this process. Now that I have it mostly round, I'm gonna actually take it over to the other lathe, which has a longer tool wrist. Obviously, this is pretty superfluous. Not very many people have a lot of lathes, but thankfully I'm in Greg Pennington's Windsor chair making shop, which has two lathes, so let's go over there. Just like we did before, we're going to stick it in between the two centers on the lathe. We'll get it nice and tight without stressing it and creating tension in between. Tighten the knobs, get our Still a couple places that are too. All right, now we're good. Okay, when we're trying to turn extremely quickly and efficiently, and or when we're turning a bunch of the same parts, we get to use a story stick. So this is for our double bobbin legs. I'm gonna make a series of marks that match the story stick. Then I'm gonna size them down to those, I'm gonna size each section down to these measurements on the story stick, and then I'm going to turn the shape. I'm using a Galbert caliper here. You can use regular calipers that look like this to accomplish the exact same thing. This one's handy because it has a little built-in ruler so I know exactly the size that I'm going to without having to have several pairs of this set to different dimensions when I start. Now I'm going to use the parting tool to size each thing down to the dimensions that are indicated on our story stick. I want to start removing the bulk in the middle and leave a little bit near the ends because the ends are going to be the skinnier parts. If I had something super skinny, I would want to remove everything else before I remove that skinny spot because it will reduce chatter as I'm working. Want to take nice controlled patches. I can get away with taking chunkier bits when there's still tons of material to remove, but you always want to stay under control. When I'm getting down close to that, I can either make a witness mark with a chisel, or I can use a pencil mark, and this is preferable to me because it'll disappear. 
And this is just going to help me remember exactly where the center of all those parts are. So I'm just going to try to stay away from them with my chisel, with my couch. And when I'm turning, I'm actually looking at the shadow, the area back here, not right by my chisel because right by my, or right by my gouge, because my gouge is going to lie to me a little bit because it creates its own shadow. But if I look back here, I can actually see whether or not I'm creating a straight line. I can see the bumps and the rivers and the valleys, and I can quickly get rid of those. And even as I'm using this gouge, I'm slightly rotating it in and out. I'll keep this surface really well waxed so that it can slide across the surface. And I'm just avoiding that area um, that's got the pencil mark on it because I want to keep it. But I'm going to ease up on it and turn the material away from it like that. And when you're using this kind of gouge, it basically acts as a gas pedal. If you have it like this, your gas is all the way open. You've got your pedal to the floor. When you twist it, you actually can reduce that throttle a little bit. So you'll notice that when I'm trying to make these really detailed cuts, I'm coming in with the bevel of the tool fully resting on the wood, and I'm just raising the tool up until it starts making a very fine cut. And then as I turn away from these bobbins, I'm rotating the tool along with it. And again, when I'm going along the spindle, my whole body is moving. It's not just my, my hand, and that gives me a whole lot more control. <laughs> I was just going to make this a spindle and put it right onto my chair. I'd want to do some finished sanding or some other finishing things, but we're actually going to create a faceted finish on these chair legs using a spoke shape. So I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna look one more time to make sure there's no weird mountains or anything. But as far as I'm concerned, that looks pretty dang good. The double bobbin is designed to basically look a lot like a piece of bamboo or sections of bamboo. I'm really pleased with the way that looks. I'm gonna take it inside and use my spoke shape. So that's exactly how we turn a double bobbin chair leg. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and to do things with their own hands as well. Cheers. You want to make sure that they can spin freely from your